people here from all over the world and there are, are a group of mad Moroccans in the air right now heading in this direction <laughs> led, led by Hamri, the great painter of Morocco and his band of Jujuka musicians. Already there are people here from Canada and from America and from Italy and France and so on. So I hope you all enjoy yourself. <laughs> I'd like to congratulate Terry Wilson, Joe Ambrose, uh, Frank Grill uh, on the uh, achievement of bringing these paintings here and also on the production of the book and the postcard for the text. I, for one, approaching 40, finally rejuvenated. <laughs> the Here to Go show comes directly from a book that Terry wrote with Brian Dyson's assistance called uh, Here to Go and at R101 which was um, really Dyson's testimonial and uh, we met Terry some time ago and we felt that you know, we, Frank and me have great respect for the experimentation that uh, Dyson and Burroughs undertook and I think we've all been very heavily influenced in our own lives particularly by Burroughs's social vision. <laughs> this is my this is my favorite of these three. I think we definitely use that one. Like this is this one here. Felicity has one like this, but this one is quite exquisite. Look, mm -hmm. at, this. Look at these. You got these little kids in mm -hmm. here. On the other mm -hmm. hand, you've got a kid and a, and a family group there, and so on. And uh, they become almost like calligraphies yeah. as you go back mm -hmm. into it. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I mean, this is the thing. I mean, that doesn't reproduce. That's never going to reproduce the way it looks. Mm -hmm. here. No, no. And that's one of the problems that Geisen has. He reproduces in a, in a way that you're looking at, and it looks very pretty, but it doesn't have the the depth in there that the paintings have that really the so psyche is kind of one of the problems of the whole area like you i mean you listen to Jujuka on a record and exactly. it's a very different exactly the, the thing about geisen's work of course is that it is beautiful in that kind of oriental way i was talking about <coughs> art collins today and uh he said iggy's going to do that piece if he can get it to us uh in a week's time about rather than like now but he's in Mexico, he's going to fax this thing to him in, in New York and we're going to get it from him. And the Burroughs piece is through uh, for the introduction to Man From Nowhere. And, uh, uh. Brian Geisen is the only man I have ever respected. The only person of either sex. <clears throat> he was completely enigmatic because he was completely himself. Uh, which I think accounts for the fact that he never was uh, successful as an artist. 
because he was himself, and most people are not, uh, they saw in him a uh, threat, dead threat. <coughs> right, you saw it. As for the painting, I mean, anything I know about painting, I learned from him that it's an understatement to say that my painting is, uh, is derivative. Uh, Brian and I, of course, collaborated on a number of works. We had <coughs> first was Minutes to Go, then The Exterminator, and also uh, a book called The Third Mind. I know that we were all agreed that Brian, in his lifetime, never got the success that he deserved. And we hope, point to this event is, that we can get that, uh, the success that he deserved after his death. I know that he, he said with some uh, bitterness that the, his society, rich society friends who rarely bought any pictures, uh, that don't worry about Brian, he is slated for posthumous day. Okay. He did not feel very uh, comfortable and satisfied with that. And I don't blame him because he had money troubles most of his life. Yes, definitely. I feel that the world is running out of people of a certain caliber. Giants, whatever you want to call them, heroes. Uh, just going out one after the other. Beckett, C1, Jean Genet. Uh, <clears throat> Brian, guys, Paul Bowl, Paul Bowl, fortunately, is still, <coughs> still alive and doing well, I hope. Uh, and we just aren't any more. We just aren't any more. The mold is gone.
be defaced. Do something children will remember all their lives, but don't be spontaneous unless the poetic terrorist muse has possessed you. Dress up, leave a false name, be legendary. The best poetic terrorism is against the law, but don't get caught. Art as crime, crime as art. <laughs> presence in Dublin during the whole week created a little it was to to those on the uh, on the outside of his whirlwind he must have appeared like the Tasmanian devil and to those on the inside uh, he was just a marvelous marvelous person to have around and a great inspirational person his his life force is completely unique I don't think uh, I don't think I could ever imagine meeting another person like Hamry. And Hamry was available. Anyone who wanted to meet Hamry, they could meet Hamry. And some who didn't want to meet Hamry got to meet Hamry as well. Uh, he really had his handle on the situation. I, I went around to Duke Street in some James's, um, really not knowing who I had spoken to. I mean, so I didn't know whether I was going to meet him or William. Uh, I knocked on the flat, the door of the flat I'd been had been given there, and uh, Brian answered the door, opened the door, and um, he'd asked me to bring along something that I'd written. So I had some stuff, Dreams of Green Bay, so there. Uh, the impression where it was like standing in front of a, of a of a train moving at about 100 miles an hour or something it was a trim he just a blast of all, a physical impact of energy and he some, he took the manuscript out of my hand and shut the door in my face as if i were the postman or something like that.
they, they would be William and sort of almost walking behind him if you saw them in the street. I mean, it would be William with the hat pulled down there and the glasses and everything and his briefcase and the newspaper. And he was sort of high, dressed like a banker or a mortician or whatever. And, uh, and he would almost hide behind Brian in any social circumstance. I mean, Brian would talk for him for, and that would be Brian. He was, you know, a bit dazzling and bejeweled and God knows what her... Uh, bangles and spangles and, and, you know, maybe dressed rather exotically. Whereas, uh, yeah, there would be a total contrast. <laughs> Hi, I'm Terry Wilson and this is the Here To Go Show. In these times and circumstances, uh, small mercies are to be welcomed and large, not to say king-sized ones, treasured. Um, very much in the latter category, here is the original lineup of the Baby Snake. Badaya's voice it sounded teasing, enticing, hard to handle. Come around if you want, I said. This was the man whose intelligence background had taught him how to switch identity and rub out personal history to disappear into Morocco in the early 50s on the land to Rue Mojo's Tangier restaurant. Tall, broad shouldered, handsome with a cold, imperious man, he had left behind him how many different nationalities and identities. 
painter, beach boy, writer, set designer, labor organizer, phony bomb, raconteur always. Superb, just the correct frequency of glacial geniality. Everyone will want to be the exception. The man from nowhere negotiated like a Tangier spacecraft on a Swiss bank. Nobody knew who he was anymore, compiling a recipe book of magic in his spare time. Tricky business. It was almost closing time for magic in Morocco. Electronic mind control was moving in and the genuine forces would soon be in full retreat. Gems to be snapped up before they disappeared forever. Spells and curses. Dance and trance. The other method was up for grabs. Tangier was the prognostic pulse of the world, as the old man declared. CD operators packed the international zone Hawkeye. The indefatigable facility, Duchess of Wind, British intelligence, trailing suitcases and native bearers across the Soko heading for the cheapest pension. She would keep a firm green eye on Badaya for the rest of his life. The exception, the one he really likes, but he saw her coming. How long are you here for? And for any particular reason, he said. She said. They chased him out eventually. The old trick, waving so much money under your nose, you really believe you're going to get your hands around a whole lot of it someday soon. And then taking you to the cleaners, you'll never see another dime. Green eyes on Badaya for the rest of his life, forever spells and curses, time, tricky business. He was out with the shirt on his back, with a few tricks up his sleeve. question used to be can a white boy play the blues and the answer is who really gives a fuck there was a 16 year old white american boy who came from a good family he was lean and muscular worked out until he was 15 thought america was the greatest place on earth then he discovered drugs and rock and roll and then he discovered sex can a boy like that take within himself the spirit of hassani saba the old man of the mountain the guy who said nothing is true and everything is permitted the man who discovered marijuana gave us the concept of assassination made a merit of nihilism. The boys' recollections concerned ball games, the first Beastie Boys album, putting in bedtime with his older brother's chick. Her name was Joni. She had a reputation for dexterity and innovation. She looked like Debbie Harry, younger of course, but not so sexy. The past is just the past, neutral and irrelevant. The future is a different country. They're going to have to do things differently there. The boy walked down the steps into the toilet. He could hear LL Cool J rapping in the background, probably that black record shop he used to frequent. He grabbed another white boy, about his own build and age, who was just standing around. He took out his knife with the sharpened 8 inch blade, slid it ruthlessly through the boy's Pearl Jam t-shirt and on and on into his left kidney. Then, while his victim was howling like a pig in a slaughterhouse having fallen to the ground, he removed the blade from the kidney and applied it to the victim's throat. That was when the boy really started to flow. It was a professional hit, he dropped the knife on the ground and walked calmly up the steps away from the toilet. LL was still rapping, the assassin was covered in blood, but at least he was heading towards the future.
me painting a huge picture, I don't know how many feet by how many feet, some 15 feet by 25 feet or something on a big roll of paper, which William lost, strangely enough. He moved out of the apartment and forgot to take that with him. Literature was 50 years at least behind painting and the discoveries that had come in the early part of the century when the first gesture was really throwing sand onto the canvas, uh, whereby the whole matter, the matière, as the French call it, of painting, was radically changed. It was no longer what it had been since, at least since the Renaissance, of pigments applied in a medium of oil to a canvas or a gesso-covered wooden surface, uh, and, there, and developed from there to whatever effects could be obtained. No, it had become really something as we know painting now, begins really with sand thrown into the paint on the canvas. Such fields can be totally disrupted by a nuclear explosion. The mummy's nightmare, disintegration of souls. And this is precisely the ultra secret and super sensitive function of the atom bomb a soul killer, alleviate an escalating soul bomb. Scientists always said there's no such thing as a soul. Now they're in a position to prove it. Total death, soul death, is what the Egyptians call the second and final death. This awesome power souls forever is now vested in far-sighted and responsible men in the State Department, the CIA, and the Pentagon. are seen for what they are. Dead, empty mass, manipulated by computers. And what is behind the computers? Remote control, force. Look at the prison you are in. We are all in. This is a penal colony that is now a death camp. Place to the second and final death.
nothing here now but the recordings. Shut them off. They are as radioactive as an old joke. That's William, and this is a, somebody called the captain or something who was a, had, a, had a yacht. He was a very mysterious man who later married a very wealthy American woman. And there's William looking quite magical on this hat. His magical hat. Yeah, it's his magical hat. He's always had magical hats. Beyond the 
basic God standard of fear and danger. It is the most heavily guarded road in the world, where it gives access to the gift that supersedes all other gifts. Immortality. Sure to meet on the road to the Western Lands.